Here's an appreciation of the Edmund Astro Scan. Yes, and here it is, one of the most iconic telescopes in history, the Edmund Scientific Astro Scan. Over 90,000 of these units were produced between 1975 and 2013 when, of all things, the mold broke. I was first introduced to this telescope back in the late 1970s. I was visiting my cousin's house in upstate New York, and lying on the table was a digest size catalog similar to this one, Edmund Scientific Catalog, this one's 1979, and just inside the front cover was an ad for the AstroScan 2001, the shape of the future. And there on the right side of the page, there were all these pictures of guys hiking with it and putting it on the hood of their car and cradling like a baby. I don't think any of those things are very good ideas, but uh, it just stirred up my imagination. And if you turn the page, there was an eyepiece comparison of simulated views of the Orion Nebula through various telescopes. And boy, was I fascinated by that. And if you think about it, that one page has had an enormous influence on what I am today. The idea that you could look through different telescopes and see different kinds of views. Turn the page again, and there's a really great ad for the four and a quarter inch F10. Look at those two kids. They're looking like they're having so much fun. I just wanted to be one of those two kids. And if you've read the article on my website, later on in life, I actually did wind up getting one of those things, and I was a little disappointed. You can read all about that. Back in the late 1970s, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so getting one of these things was just out of the question. So for the first year or so, I wound up uh, just sitting on a lawn chair in my parents' front yard with a book borrowed from the library. It was the Mag, uh, Edmund Mag 5 Star Atlas, which I renewed over and over again, and it took me a year to memorize all the constellations and learn my way around the night sky. So if you think about it, this Edmund Scientific Astroscan had an enormous influence on who I am today, and I never even owned one. <laughs> but anyhow, I was looking through my basement the other day in, pre in preparation for this video, and I found uh, what I eventually did with that MAG-5 star atlas is I, I finally got the wherewithal to make photocopies of the star uh, charts. And here they are. There are six of these maps, and boy, these bring back so many memories. They're hand-drawn maps as they were of all the, from all that era from Edmund Scientific. But I can still recall uh, sitting outside and looking at these. Hard to believe. These maps, pieces of paper, over 40 years old. The AstroScan was always on everybody's short list of good beginner telescopes, but throughout the 1980s and 1990s, they began to face some serious competition from Mead and Celestron, who were turning out some really good telescopes at attractive prices. And at the same time, the AstroScan was having trouble maintaining costs on its own. I can remember the prices rising, and towards the end of its run, this thing costing something like $329. It's a lot of money for one of these things. The AstroScan's next challenge came in the year 2000 when the patent on this thing was scheduled to run out. And right around that time, you started to see some imitators. Bushnell had the Voyager. Uh, Orion had this thing called a Funscope. And the interesting thing about those telescopes is neither of them sold very well, which didn't bode well for the AstroScan because it was a sign that maybe this thing's time had passed. Uh, this red disco-inspired styling of the 1970s, which I found so appealing, may not have been relevant anymore. In 2001, Edmund Scientific was sold to another company, and production was eventually moved to China. Production continued both in Barrington, New Jersey, and then later to China, as later versions replaced the classic peep sight with a red dot finder that you find in telescopes today. But more importantly, the classic RKE eyepiece that was furnished for years with this telescope was replaced with a generic plossel, making these newer versions somewhat less desirable to collectors. So, should you get one of these things? Well, let me tell you a couple of things that I found that you should look out for. Uh, people are concerned about the optics. How are the optics? Um, well, <laughs> let's just say the internet can be a cruel place. I'll leave you to go to the forums and read the comments there. 
Uh, I think it's a good thing that for many years this telescope came with a 28 millimeter RKE eyepiece because just about any telescope will look good at 16 power. Uh, usually the next eyepiece that people bought was the 15 millimeter RKE, which doubled the power um, to about 30 or so, but even then the 15 was getting a little bit tight and squinty, wasn't a great eyepiece. Um, so the optics, I don't know, I mean, I've tried borrowing this thing out, you know, when you get to about 60 or 80 power on Saturn and Jupiter, the optics start getting a little bit soft, it's not great. If you do get one of these, this peep sight is often missing. And the number one thing you're going to have to look out for when purchasing a used astro scan isn't the optics, it's missing parts. And the problem is, uh, if something is missing off the telescope, these parts are becoming very hard to find. So keep that in mind. Now on the peep sight itself, there's a vinyl covering at the end here. This piece very often does go missing. So if you're actually going to use the telescope, be mindful of that because in the dark this thing is black. You get too close to this piece of metal, it will scratch your eyeglasses. Ask me how I know. Uh, some people, for the first time they do this, when you rack out the eyepiece too far, um, it just comes out. And this is normal. There's no stop in this or there hasn't been one in every, every one of these that I've seen. But you can just put the thing back in. Uh, the sun warning label has faded on many of these. This is relatively normal. If you do find one with the lettering sharp and clear, it's usually a sign the telescope has been well taken care of. Uh, this strap is also sometimes missing. Um, so people sometimes ask me if I think this is a collectible telescope. I don't think so quite yet. Um, I think that due to the numbers of units that they made, and the fact that they were only recently discontinued means they're not going to be valuable, I don't think, for a while. So if you see one on eBay or on Craigslist or someplace else, um, it's doesn't, if it's not the right price, if it doesn't have the accessories you want, I would be patient. Uh, another one will come along. Now the ironic thing is these RKE eyepieces are collectible. Um, the 28s are fairly common. These are the ones that came with the telescopes uh, for many, many years. Again, the 15, like I said, is usually the next one that people bought. The others are less common. And the things you're going to have the most trouble finding are the Barlow lens and the case. Oh, that case. It's really, really hard to find. If you do find one, um, it's probably a collector who has made it a point to get all five eyepieces, the Barlow and the case together, and you just buy the whole thing together. Uh, so that's not a bad investment. I've seen those selling for about $250. You know, for seven pieces, you know, it's $30 to $40 a piece. It's not that bad as of yet. If you do find someone who has the rubber eye cup for the 28, make sure it's not corroded. Some of these are starting to look pretty grungy. So I have a rule of thumb about buying older telescopes that are missing parts. If I'm looking at a telescope I'm thinking about buying and it's missing some sort of accessory, I assume it will always be missing and I will never be able to find a replacement. And then I ask myself, you still want to buy it? If you do buy one of these things to use it, your major problem is going to be finding a place to set it. Um, some people try setting it on the hood of a car, on a picnic table, on a barrel or something. Uh, they're not great solutions. I have a club member who came up with a really great solution. It's a heavy-duty tripod, and I'll throw a picture of it up here so you can see it. This is the best implementation of this idea that I've ever seen. Um, what I used to do, I was in corporate sales for many, many years, and when you're in sales, you wind up going to a lot of hotel rooms, and it's really boring. So what I would do is I would take this and put it in a milk carton with some foam padding around. I'd just throw it in the trunk. So I, uh, if I was in a hotel room, I used to travel to Maine a lot. It's really dark up there. If I was bored at night, I'd just take the telescope out of the milk carton. You turn the milk carton over, you set the telescope on it, and you're good to go. Another thing you can do is if you have a plastic tub, uh, you could do the same thing. Salespeople always have plastic tubs in their cars filled with literature and demos, so that wasn't a big stretch for me. Uh, I used to set up a kid's station at public star parties with a tub or the milk carton turned upside down so that kids who were short enough to you know, get to the eyepiece without any discomfort could look through it. 
So there you have it, a brief appreciation of the Edmund Astro scan. I cannot be anywhere near objective about this thing. It was such a big part of my childhood and such a big part of my formative upbringing um, in a, as an amateur astronomer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.